What if Deku experienced parenthood? In part 1, we explore how Izuku tackles the challenges of raising a child. Let's dive in. Midoriya Izuku has always been characterized by being someone extremely positive, hardworking and firm in what interests him. The pride of his parents in getting ahead despite possessing little at the beginning, it is not that they were a rich family or anything like that, they went through hardships that almost made them fall, their child always encouraged them and helped them more and that allowed them to give him a good life and what was more important a good education. Graduating with honors from a good university, your child has finally spread his wings and taken flight away from the nest and protection of his loving parents to live his life. He lived in a very small and very cheap apartment, it was enough for the moment and of course for his dreams it was only the beginning. With this freedom also came new responsibilities that he gladly accepted, he was not very picky about challenges and much less was he not one to back down from a difficulty, which was exactly what he was suffering from since he did not seem to have any luck in getting jobs. Or rather, stable jobs. Although she went from one job to another, they did not last long due to the nature of the jobs and, although it bothered her, she continued without stopping until she received a call from a great friend who had done quite well for her. Mina Ashido, a very effervescent and cheerful girl who could cheer up even the darkest day. When they met she was working as a babysitter for many of the children of both of their classmates, she was very skilled in child care and that led her to have her own babysitting service looking for people who share her passion for caring and it had turned out well. He took the opportunity offered to him by his friend and was just about to have his first job, according to Mina it wouldn't be very complicated and if he was lucky enough he could even be hired again by the same person. The person who hired the babysitter's services didn't leave much information beyond the address of the place and a few other details that needed to be given, such as whether the child had an illness or needed something specific. Fortunately, it wasn't anything like that, just very closed-minded. Izuku Apartment 113, looked at the address again before looking at the door in front of him and of course the number that was there yes, it's this one he rang the bell waiting patiently for it to open. Wait a minute was heard from inside the apartment. Izuku, this building shows that it is people with a lot of money. I hope everything goes well for me, he let out a sigh trying to calm down. Who is it? A blonde woman opened the door, Izuku noticed she was quite tense and with clear signs of distress. Izuku babysitting service, Happy Rabbit smiled calmly at the woman who seemed calmer. Thank you for arriving so quickly, please come in he stepped aside, letting the freckled boy pass through what he considered a rich man's home with so much space I didn't think it would take so little time to send someone. Usually when I call a babysitter they keep me waiting for too long he explained as he walked back to his room to finish getting ready. Izuku oh, the service is something new and little known so it is quite likely that we will be free or at least for the moment he spoke without leaving the large room of the apartment. It's perfect for my situation, the woman came out again, this time she looked more radiant and much more ready to go. Izuku who will I take care of? He spoke with encouragement to the woman who walked towards a table near the door taking some keys. My daughter, I'm sorry I couldn't be more specific when I requested your service, but as you could see, I don't have much time and she can't be left alone without further ado, she approached the freckled man, handing out a piece of paper it's all you need in case of emergency. Izuku do you have any illness that you are having a cold or something? He asked looking at the numbers that were. None, she is in very good health the freckled man nodded. Izuku you can leave it in my hands Miss Tatsuma the blonde smiled relieved. Ryuko, thanks for coming walked back down the hall this time to her daughter's room honey, upon entering she looked at her daughter who had a frown and a pout, she didn't like the idea of mom the babysitter arrived he approached the little girl with hair as golden as her mother. I don't want to go out, he said, turning around and refusing to get out of bed. Ryuko honey, we already talked about this, she sat on the edge of the bed, looking sadly at her little treasure I can't leave you alone at home and your aunt Rumi can't always take care of you. I hired someone because I'm afraid of what might happen to you. You don't trust me, he murmured sadly. Ryuko honey, accidents happen, it's not about not trusting you, it's about protecting you because you're all I have, she caressed her little girl's head who relaxed a little, it won't be for long, I'll go to work and as soon as I can I'll come home, okay? Well, she gave in to her mother who picked her up to go back to the babysitter. Ryuko I'm sorry I'm late, she smiled at the freckled boy who was looking at the nice decoration of the place she's the one you have to take care of she showed her daughter who looked at the freckled boy who smiled sideways. It's a living broccoli, he pointed at the freckled boy, embarrassing his mother and causing the green-haired boy to laugh. Ryuko Ryuta, don't say things like that she scolded her little girl who tilted her head in confusion that's rude. But it's true, he defended himself, making his mother sigh. Ryuko I'm so sorry the freckled boy smiled as if nothing had happened. Izuku don't worry, 
she only tells somewhat uncomfortable truths seconded the girl who clung a little to her mother hello little one, the girl hit her face in her mother's neck who caressed her back she doesn't usually separate herself from you much, right? Ryuko she's very attached. She's scared of people she doesn't know the freckled man nodded as the blonde put the girl down Ryuta, he's the one who'll take care of you, don't do anything wrong okay? The girl looked at her mother and then at the freckled man before clinging to her mother's leg Ryuta. Izuku Ryuta-chan, the girl looked at the talking broccoli again with some fear tell me are you hungry? The girl thought before her belly growled making her turn red like a tomato. A little bit, he murmured with shame. Izuku tell me what you like to eat? The girl looked at her mother who caressed her messy blonde hair. I like cookies she said fearfully. Izuku would you like to help me prepare cookies? The girl nodded without hesitation, can you tell me where the kitchen is? The girl hurriedly grabbed the freckled boy by the sleeve of his shirt and almost dragged him into the kitchen. Ryuko wow, her daughter was really easy to convince, which worried her a little. Izuku don't worry Miss Tatsuma, I'm here to take care of Ryuto while you do your job he assured with the girl nearby. Ryuko, thank you very much, she looked quite relieved this, she hadn't even stopped to ask the boy's name. Izuku Midoriya Izuku smiled calmly as the woman turned red. Mom, don't go, the girl clung to her mother again, who looked at her feeling sad for leaving her alone. Izuku Ryuta chan, do you think we should make cookies for when your mom comes? The girl looked at him curious about the idea that way you would be celebrating her return after such a long day at work, do you like the idea? Make cookies for mom, she murmured and then smiled, yes, I want to, she said, running towards the freckled boy. Izuku okay but first she has to leave because if not there would be no celebration the girl was surprised as she turned to her mother. Bye, mommy, he said smiling, leaving his mother surprised again. Ryuko bye darling, smiling she left the kitchen leaving the new babysitter and her daughter. Letting out a sigh, Izuku left the cookies on the table as he rested and looked at all the mess made in the kitchen, teaching a child how to make his favorite dessert was not an easy thing. They made a lot of mess doing things step by step while the infant was very frustrated for not achieving it the first time, even so Izuku encouraged her not to give up so easily and so very slowly he managed to get the girl to make chocolate chip cookies with his help and now she ate them with a proud smile on her face. Izuku are they delicious? The girl nodded, eating one more, try not to eat too many or else your mom won't have any, the girl nodded, eating the last cookie. Ryuta, thanks for teaching me smiled with some embarrassment. Izuku it's nothing. He smiled at the girl as he said about cleaning up the mess they had left in the kitchen. Ryuta mom will come soon right? He asked with fear. Izuku of course, if you want we can call her in a while the girl's eyes sparkled before she nodded happily smiles suit you much more than long faces Ryuta chan the girl smiled with a blush haven't you been separated from your mother much before? The girl lowered her gaze. Ryuta mom is very busy, she spoke quietly. Fearing being scolded she doesn't usually take me to many places and I usually stay with Aunt Rumi but I always miss her. Izuku is this the first time you've been left with a babysitter? The girl nodded nervously I understand, he continued with his cleaning work while the girl looked at the cookies they had made tell me Ryuta-chan, the girl looked at him do you like movies? Ryuta a lot, he said with a smile. Izuku do you want to watch a movie after I finish here? The girl nodded. Ryuta but mom doesn't like me to go out that discouraged him a little. Izuku oh, don't worry, surely we can find a way to watch a movie, any preference? The girl got excited, nodding to her caregiver. Ryuta let's watch dragon movies, he said happily. Izuku well dragons they will be. Being far away from her daughter was not easy for Ryuko Tatsuma at all, her little girl of only 4 years old was her entire world and it always broke her heart to have to leave her alone when she went to work. The bills did not pay themselves and much less the necessary expenses of her little girl she was happy to think of her and her adorable smile. Unfortunately this time Rumi could not go to take care of her, stuck on a business trip on the other side of the ocean. Obviously she had her doubts about leaving her with a stranger but the one she hired did not look bad and the reviews that the nanny agency had were not bad either, in the four hours that she spent looking it was the one that suited her best. The guy they sent didn't look exactly like how she expected a babysitter to look and for a few seconds she hesitated about calling the agency again to ask for a change of babysitter but she gave him the benefit of the doubt and he proved to be quite capable by calming her daughter down and distracting her, which was what she was looking for. When she started thinking about her little girl she wanted to go home again but she had to finish things at the company first. It wasn't easy being the leader of a big company and even less so with her new product about to come out. Ryuko how I could use a coffee right now? She murmured sitting in her chair while reviewing various reports that came to her how are you, 
she murmured looking at a photo of her daughter and hers on her third birthday, adorably dressed as a princess. Hey! Mrs. Tatsumi, he's here, her secretary spoke through the answering machine, leaving the atmosphere quite cold, what do I do? She asked fearfully in front of the subject she was talking about. Ryuko call security and get him out of here, he has no right to set foot in here she ordered seriously. Understood, he spoke with fear leaving the atmosphere just as tense. Ryuko who does she think she is? She muttered to herself with a serious expression, lately she was more present than usual and it was really starting to be annoying. Ryuko, open the damn door, a slam was heard from the other side, making the woman sigh, who stood up with all the calm in the world and walked towards the door. Ryuko I don't understand what you're doing here, you have a restraining order, do you really want to go to jail for that? She spoke with total calm, she had the whole situation under control. She's my daughter too, I have every right to see her, he knocked on the door again, almost breaking it. Ryuko you lost that right the moment you left her abandoned to go drink she spoke with resentment leaving the man silent. Things didn't happen like that and you know it, he said seriously and a little embarrassed. Ryuko really? Because what I know is that they found you drunk and with a lot of drugs in your system next to your co-worker in a seedy hotel while I was breaking my back to give her the best life she could have, she said with hatred leaving the guy without an answer you are scum and I am glad that my daughter will never have to meet you the guy remained static while the guards arrived. Sir, you have to leave the building, said one of his guards quite seriously, taking the man away and leaving the woman there trembling with rage. Ryuko Yuf, she leaned against the door and slid to the floor what did I do to deserve this, a question left in the air that would probably never have an answer. Despite being in low spirits due to the afternoon interruption, she was able to concentrate enough to finish her work as quickly as possible to go to her little girl. It was the only thing she needed at that moment, to have her daughter in her arms and forget for a moment that she had any relationship with that disgusting and self-centered being who only seeks his own satisfaction. In any case, it was not the time to cry over spilt milk, What's done was done and looking on the bright side she obtained her greatest treasure thanks to the bad things in her life and she had just finished the day's work, in the evening so she could go back to preparing dinner for her and her daughter and by the way thank the babysitter for taking care of her all day, she just hoped that when she arrived there wouldn't be a disaster although it wouldn't surprise her either, her daughter was extremely lively and liked to draw a lot so she could expect anything. Ryuko I'm here, she announced once she left her shoes at the entrance and entered her home that looked perfectly clean. Ryuta mommy, her daughter jumped to greet her with great enthusiasm. Ryuko hello my girl, how was your day? Did you enjoy it? The girl nodded with great joy. Ryuta Izuku let me watch many, many, many dragon movies and we saw how they train and how they like to take care of things and and, his little girl was so excited that she couldn't contain herself. Ryuko so you had a good time? She picked up her little girl and they both went to the living room where they saw the freckled boy organizing the coffee table. Ryuta a lot, his mother smiled fondly. Ryuko hello Midoriya-san, thank you for taking care of Ryuta she bowed to the freckled boy who felt embarrassed. Izuku it was nothing, Ryuta-chan is a very good girl and there was no problem she woke up quite happy about her day she is quite polite and very calm. Ryuko I already paid you, just let me leave everything, okay? The freckled man nodded calmly. Izuku by the way Ryuta-chan made some cookies and I recommend eating them as dessert with the dinner I made the woman stopped for a moment and turned to see him. Ryuko did you make dinner? The freckled boy nodded with some embarrassment. Izuku it was Ryuta-chan's idea, he thought it would be a good idea to thank her for a great job as a mother the blonde looked at her daughter who smiled with an adorable blush. Ryuko ah my sweet girl hugged her little girl once more before putting her down on the ground thank you very much Midoriya-san, I really appreciate the gesture. Izuku it was nothing the woman left for a moment before returning with an envelope. Ryuko her payment for good service the freckled boy took the envelope and put it in his jacket. Izuku, thank you very much, when I need to take care of this adorable girl again we will gladly do so he smiled at the woman who nodded without further ado I am leaving Tatsuma-san, Ryuta-chan he bowed to mother and daughter before leaving the apartment, it had been an excellent first day. Mina looked at her friend in disbelief as he prepared a coffee and continued talking about the great things that had happened to him in the last few days. She had forgotten how lucky the green-haired boy was, she had already seen it when they were in college, how everything seemed to go well for him, especially with all the effort he put in. Last-minute arrivals, purchases that seemed impossible and even fanciful, she ended up getting used to it but it was still impressive. Mina sometimes I really think you are a divine being who comes to laugh at mortals she commented while the freckled man sat down leaving two cups on the table in front of him. Izuku come on, it's not that big of a deal, 
they probably gave me so much money because of some mistake or because I did extra things he tried to excuse himself again with all the good things that happened besides, you know me quite well Mina, you know that I focus 100% when I'm on a project. Mina yes, that's why I hired you and I really didn't expect you to do so many things in just one week that you're here she drank her coffee and looked quite seriously at her friend I hired you to be a babysitter, not to be a secretary, advisor and in advertising her friend scratched his neck with some embarrassment. Izuku Mina, I don't like to stay still, if I can help you with something I will, you have something incredible here and you are knowing how to take advantage of it a lot, I just wanted to contribute a little more the pink haired girl side drinking more of her coffee. Mina and the worst of all is that you reject the money I offered you for all that, his friend smiled tensely. Izuku I did it because I wanted to, it's not something you have to pay for, and you'll surely use that money to invest in your entire project, right? Her friend drank the coffee and fell silent. Mina thank you for supporting me so much, she murmured, feeling bad for all the work the freckled boy was doing that was not his responsibility. With everything organized, the requests for babysitters began to rain down much more frequently than before as well as the vacancies began to fill so almost overnight Mina went from having six people as babysitters, not counting Izuku, to almost twenty, which pleased her a lot, with Izuku in her project she literally had a good future assured thanks to the freckled boy's skills it was easy to interview people. She had to admit how impressive it was to see the freckled boy asking all kinds of questions and revealing all kinds of things to many people who seemed too suspicious and untrustworthy. In the end they achieved a fairly stable staff so things began to get better. Just two weeks after the green-haired boy arrived and with the entire squad ready, Mina received a request again from the same woman as Izuku's first job, this time asking him specifically, it's not that he didn't want to send him, it's just that he was quite busy with other children to take care of, the green-haired boy knew how to win hearts very easily which generated many clients who asked him specifically for it. Mina Izuku, do you have time to take care of a child for a whole day? Still, I wanted to fulfill this client's whim, mainly because of the pay they received. Izuku a whole day? He looked at the pink-haired girl for a moment and then at the monitor where he was what day do I need him? The pink-haired girl smiled tensely. Mina tomorrow, the freckled boy looked at the screen again. Izuku tomorrow I have to take care of a baby at night, but I'm free during the day who is it? The pink-haired girl let out a sigh. Mina Mrs. Tatsuma wants you to take care of her daughter again, although this time she put in a lot of information she passed the freckled boy a sheet of paper. Izuku I see, he smiled looking at the paper and then returned it to the pinkette in that case I'm glad to take care of Ryuta Chan the pinkette felt quite relieved. Mina I'm sorry to give you so much work the freckled man smiled as if it were nothing. Izuku don't worry, it's my way of paying you for giving me jobs, you really saved me from a tight spot Mina the pink-haired girl smiled, she had luck on her side. 10 a.m. the next day came pretty quickly from Ryuko's perspective who had prepared everything for today in advance, with the revelation of her new smart watch and a couple of other things she would be totally busy and of course Rumi still hadn't returned from her business trip, another way of saying that she had run away again, so she hired the babysitting services again and specifically the one from last time since she didn't think someone new would be good for her daughter, she had to go little by little if she wanted to get to take her to a school. Ryuta can't you work from here today? The little girl commented after giving her a bath and putting her red dragon pajamas on. Ryuko today is something important for the company, something quite innovative will come out that will give us a lot of money to spend on many, many things for both of us he picked up his girl and gave her a big hug but don't worry, I already called for someone to take care of you he caressed his girl who looked at him with some emotion. Ryuta Izuku will come back? He smiled at his mother who nodded. Ryuko that's right, so you have to behave as well as last time the girl nodded determinedly before the bell rang it must be him, she left the girl on the floor and went to the door to open it for the babysitter. Izuku Tatsuma-san the freckled one smiled at the blonde who seemed calmer. Ryuko, thanks for arriving so early Midoriya-san stepped aside to let the freckled boy pass who this time came with a backpack huh? Midoriya-san what do you have there? Izuku I don't think it's a good idea for Ryuta-chan to only have the television so I brought something to do and I know he might like it he opened his backpack showing a couple of craft things. Ryuta crafts? The girl came out looking with interest at the freckled boy. Izuku that's right, would you like to make a dragon? The girl's eyes lit up. Ryuta yes, the girl was already excited with the idea of the freckled boy. Ryuko well just make sure you don't get too dirty okay? She stroked her daughter's hair who nodded I leave everything in your hands Midoriya san, she retired to her room while she let the babysitter work. Izuku come on let's go they both went to the living room ready to create a great adventure for the girl he was taking care of while his mother finished getting ready to go out. 
The auditorium was completely full and the excitement inside her was beginning to scare her in front of so many people. Despite the years she had been at the head of the company, she had not yet gotten used to being under everyone's gaze, so her nerves were very strong. She had no reason to be so nervous since she trusted in all the work that had been done to get to this moment. He looked one last time before his speech began, he looked once more at his notes trying to remember well what he was saying although surely his head was so focused on everything else that he would surely end up improvising as always happened to him. I notice you're tense, the blonde remained silent, looking out seriously. Ryuko what are you doing here, she spoke without looking at the guy behind her. Can't I come to wish luck to the love of my life? he asked with the grace he never possessed. Ryuko how curious, I don't see your girlfriend around here, she answered coldly, leaving the tense guy behind her. How many times will I have to apologize for you to forgive me? he asked with pain in his words. Ryuko the numbers don't add up for that, she turned and looked at her ex with a serious face we both know you're not here for a pathetic apology Keigo. What do you want? she asked with a serious look and a firm posture. Keigo you offend me Ryu-chan, I'm not like that, he smiled trying to convince the blonde. Ryuko let me guess, your girlfriend at the moment sent you to the trash and you come to see what you can get out of it because you are a damn leech she was starting to lose her temper. Keiko what a sharp tongue. That's why I liked you so much, he winked at her causing a withering look in the woman. Ryuko go away, before I call security the blonde Mo seemed scared by it. Keigo if you really wanted me out you would have already called your gorillas but no, you like this silent dance we're having, he took a step, at which point the blonde pressed a button that was nearby what's wrong Ryu-chan, was our time worthless to you? He spoke with a somewhat broken voice. Ryuko the only thing you were good for was taking money from me and giving me my daughter. Other than that you were nothing more than a waste of time, she responded, making enough time for him to arrive. Keigo so I'm good for something, huh? The woman continued angrily counting the seconds until her guards arrived, how about after this we sneak out for something to eat? Who knows, maybe I can even give you another treasure, he smiled flirtatiously at the woman who was at her limit. Ryuko you are disgusting, was about to start an argument when her guards appeared. Sir, access is not allowed here the blonde smiled at the woman who was quite upset by the guy's words. Keigo don't worry, I'm leaving he calmly left there followed by the guards leaving a very tense Ryuko, what he had come to look for. Despite the little incident Ryuko still managed to keep her composure and appearance to reveal her newest project to the world being cheered on by the people who were there, she knew how to keep her personal problems at bay from her job and above all avoid a terrible disaster, at some point she even forgot that she had been visited by her stupid ex, she spoke with several investors about her next big project and about others in development. The hours began to pass and soon the long-awaited event had come to an end without many setbacks, he managed to make it clear that his product was quite good and finally after getting out of it he could go with his beloved girl, he had the perfect idea for dinner, he just needed to buy a few things and buy some dessert because he was not good at that. So it took a little longer than he initially thought but he had finally managed to get a good tub of ice cream to enjoy with his little girl, of course if she wasn't asleep, he really hoped she wasn't asleep, he also had to apologize to the babysitter for taking a few minutes longer than he had initially agreed, he hoped the freckled boy wasn't so serious about the times because it was likely that at that moment he was very irritated by the lateness, he could only pray that it wasn't like that. Kago so this is where you live? About to open the door the blonde froze, looked to the side and there was her ex with a haughty smile. Ryuko you shouldn't be here, she became serious with the bags in her hand, not knowing what to do in this situation. Kago oh come on Ryu-chan don't play hard to get, he got a little closer to the woman who stood in front of the door defending that last line of defense there's no need for so much show, he got a little closer, putting the blonde against the door and producing a strange sound in it. Ryuko it's not a show. Stay away from me and my daughter she said seriously, trying not to look scared. Keigo she is also my daughter the woman clenched her fists in anger. Ryuko it's not, you've never been his father, he replied angrily. Keigo you can always start again, he extended his hand to take the blonde when the door she was defending opened causing her to fall backwards right into someone's chest. Izuku wow, that was close, the blonde looked up, meeting the green-haired man's face are you okay? She smiled kindly at the blonde who was a little stunned. Ryuko perfectly, she murmured barely audible to the freckled boy. Keigo I understand now, he looked at the freckled boy with some anger before smiling as if nothing had happened. Izuku can I help you with something, sir? He smiled, hugging the blonde, trying to make her feel safe. Keigo I was just talking to Ryu-chan tried not to make a fuss. Izuku it's not what it looked like if I'm honest. A strange guy cornering a woman at her neighbor's door, the blonde blinked in surprise. Keigo is this your house? 
he pointed at the freckled boy who smiled confidently. Izuku I like to wear simpler things than a stuffy office suit, I don't like being tangled up in appearances that are not relevant, the blonde held onto him trying to regain her composure, I ask again, what was I supposed to be doing to Tatsuma-san? Keigo we were just talking seriously he smiled calmly. Izuku I don't think the cameras say the same the blonde seemed cold with that phrase would you like to get out of this building please? I may be wrong in saying things without context but seriously it seemed like I was harassing a good lady and that is something that can be deduced as frowned upon, he smiled innocently at the blonde who left like the devil himself from there that was close, he muttered tiredly before feeling how they squeezed his arm Tatsuma-san? Ryuko I was scared, she murmured to the freckled boy who pulled her inside while he closed the door where is Ryuta? He looked around without seeing her. Izuku Ryuta-chan is in her room, she wanted to get some sleep before you arrive, he spoke calmly before sitting in front of the woman who looked a mess, would you like to talk about what just happened? Ryuko I, she looked at the freckled boy for a moment before her trembling hands I. Izuku do you want me to bring you a glass of water to calm you down? The woman looked at him and nodded well, it would be best to put those bags in the kitchen, allow me without further ado he took the message from the woman and went to the kitchen returning quickly with the glass here you go. Ryuko, thanks, drank half of the water quickly before leaving it on the table I'm sorry you saw that. Izuku no, quite the opposite, I'm sorry for reacting so late, I don't think that situation would be easy, the woman smiled sideways who was that guy? Ryuko was my ex, she spoke with some fear. Izuku wow, the woman nodded slowly they ended badly I guess. Ryuko quite a bit. It's not that I'm distrustful, but I wouldn't like to talk about it. It's just that lately he's been more present in all the places where I am and I was afraid that it could happen, she began to think about everything the blonde would have done if he had entered, what he had done to her girl and. Izuku Tatsuma-san, the freckled boy put his hand on her shoulder bringing her back to reality, he's already gone, you can't hurt him okay? Ryuko yes, I know, she let out a sigh, it's been a long day. Thanks for helping me Midoriya-san, she smiled weakly at the freckled boy who smiled as if he were a hero. Izuku don't worry. I like to help the woman nod at leaving a much calmer atmosphere. Mina looked at her friend with quite a bit of curiosity, when he arrived the next day after taking care of Mrs. Tatsuma's girl he was quite distracted, many of his classmates went to ask for some indication and found him with his eyes glued to the wall, it was clear that something had happened in that house and he wouldn't deny that his gossipy streak was showing with this mystery but it wouldn't be right to get involved in such a matter, mainly because she wasn't so gossipy anymore, he wanted to help his friend and he didn't know how. Mina hey Izuku, the freckled boy continued in his world Izuku, he put his hand on the green-haired boy's shoulder who reacted. Izuku eh? Mina? Rubbed his nose trying to focus. Mina are you feeling okay? If you're sick you can go home the freckled man shook his head slowly what's wrong? Izuku it's nothing, the pink-haired girl raised an eyebrow doubtfully it's a problem that happened yesterday when Tatsuma-san arrived from his event, I didn't know what to do or if mother and daughter were okay. Mina I understand, she sat in front of the freckled boy who looked quite distressed, are you worried that something might happen to him? Izuku that's what has me a little tense, I don't know if after that it happened again or if she did something to solve it, I would like to go but I feel like I'm being very invasive with her her friend smiled sideways. Mina you really can't stop being the superhero who saves us all, huh? She commented with grace, earning the curiosity of the freckled boy. Izuku superhero? His friend nodded I don't consider myself a hero of justice. Mina come on Izuku, since we were in college, all you did was help everyone who was in your way, me, Kirishima and even Monoma even though he hates you the green haired man turned his gaze somewhat embarrassed in my opinion you should ask, you always have words of support and a solution for problems that others may consider impossible, if you can see it as sticking your nose where you are not called but in itself it is your essence, to be where you are not called but you are needed the green haired man smiled with the pink haired man's words of encouragement. Izuku, thanks for talking to me Mina the pink-haired girl smiled quite happily. Mina I wasn't going to leave you there with a mental mess, we're friends, you can lean on my shoulder whenever you need it, okay? The freckled boy nodded calmer okay, now make the call before you go back to your wall novel without further ado the girl left, leaving the freckled boy's mind clearer. Izuku well, he clicked a couple of times on his computer, reaching the information he needed before taking his phone and starting to call the woman. Said woman was taking a bath after having a crazy day with her little girl, the times she went out with Ryuta were quite few given that since she separated from Keigo she tried to keep her away from that man, so she always kept her at home trying to reduce the chances of her meeting her father to a minimum. It could be a bit cruel but she truly hoped that in due time she could let her go out, when she was aware of the whole situation her mother had to live through, 
aware that her father is a terrible and disgusting being who only seeks his own gain, but until then she kept the outings to a minimum and even the contacts as limited as possible. There were few people who knew about Ryuta and she wanted it to stay that way to avoid anything. Today she had the great idea of going out with her little girl all day because she had made sure that Keigo couldn't get close to her daughter anymore or at least not so easily. With their little dispute last week she expanded her order against the blonde so he couldn't even get close to the building much less 600 meters from her or her daughter. Thanks to the police Ryuko knew that Keigo had tried to get a minimal visit with Ryuta but the judge wasn't convinced by it. Thanks to all the past he had so it was denied. Everything seemed to be going well. Ryuko eh? After her relaxing bath she looked at her phone with a number she didn't recognize yes, I said. She wasn't thinking anything at that moment so the idea that it could be Keigo didn't even cross her mind. Izuku Tatsuma-san it's me Midoriya, the blonde looked surprised walking to her bed and sitting down. Ryuko Midoriya-san what a surprise she looked at the ceiling quite relaxed to what do I owe your call? Izuku I'm sorry if I'm calling at a bad time or if this is a bit intrusive but I seriously couldn't stay with that doubt. The woman raised her eyebrow curious about what the freckled man was saying but can I know if you are okay? Ryuko I'm fine Midoriya-san, why do you ask? A sigh of relaxation was heard on the other end of the call. Izuku I was worried about what that guy could do after that day, the woman became somewhat tense before settling herself better in her bed and smiling calmly. Ryuko I appreciate the concern Midoriya-san but I'm totally fine, I already solved that issue, she looked through the door where her daughter was peeking out with great curiosity. Izuku I'm glad to hear it, with that he felt a weight off his shoulders if anything happens don't hesitate to call okay? I may be just a babysitter but I care about my clients the woman smiled sideways gesturing to her daughter to come in and of course she gladly did. Ryuko don't worry, it will be like that, the girl climbed onto the bed and hugged her mother who began to brush her sweet girl's hair with her fingers in fact Midoriya san, I would like to hire your services once again her girl looked at her with great emotion, she liked her babysitter. Izuku sure Tatsuma san, when would it be? He took paper and pencil and became attentive. Ryuko like the other two times, I need you to take care of her all day, I can't work from home all the time, my presence at the company is necessary at least one day a week the girl relaxed when her mother continued her caresses. Izuku don't worry Tatsuma-san, I understand, it's a pleasure to take care of Ryuta-chan, the woman smiled looking at her daughter. Ryuko tell me Ryuko, okay? Being called that reminds me of my mother and my grandmother, she heard well how she upset the freckled boy on the other side of the call. Izuku s of course Tatsuma. I mean Ryuko-san, it's no problem although it would take some time for him to get used to calling her that. Ryuko there is no need to get tense Midoriya-san, she showed that she is someone you can trust, she smiled looking at her little girl who was happy for the warmth that her mother gave off. Izuku I'm glad to know that. See you on the agreed day, just make sure to send all the information please the woman smiled, she liked it when people were so dedicated to their work. Ryuko sure, her daughter stretched her arm trying to reach the phone, what's wrong, honey? Ryuta I want to say goodbye too, he tried to reach for the phone again so his mother lowered it to his ear by Izuku, he smiled happily. Izuku goodbye Ryuta-chan, see you soon the girl nodded quite happily before the call ended. Since Izuku started being a babysitter, he always tried to change something when he took care of the children. With the babies he always brought some new toy to help them recognize shapes or even help them walk. With slightly older children he always brought them some activity that they liked, he always tried to adapt to the child he had to take care of and with little Ryuta he knew perfectly what to do. The little girl was a big fan of dragons, and in general of everything related to them, many fantasy books and many movies that had them in one way or another, she even had many stuffed animals of these mythical beings although there was something that the girl was missing. Izuku only saw that the girl had many references to the classic dragons that threw fire and were destroyers of cities and kingdoms, so he had to teach her that there was much more than simple beings of destruction, he was going to give her classes about the other types of dragons, the protectors and the wise ones, so he prepared with all the necessary things before appearing at Miss Tatsuma's apartment. Ryuko wow, you really came early today Midoriya-san had barely gotten ready to go to work, nor had he prepared breakfast when the freckled boy knocked on the door. Izuku you are the only one who hired me today so it could be because of that he commented calmly before going into the woman's home. Ryuko if I'm honest, I like that he's so dedicated to his job. I've met many who don't even want to show up when they're really needed, she commented with some anger, still remembering her ex and the problems he got into when they worked together. Izuku not all people have the same discipline or the same goal to dedicate themselves so much to something. I am disciplined, which leads to dedication the blonde smiled, she liked the green-haired boy more and more every day by the way, where is Ryuta-chan? 
Ryuko I haven't woken her up yet, she looks so cute asleep her daughter tended to move around in bed and roll up in her own blankets which made her turn into a ball of sleep. Izuku surely, he smiled tensely before approaching the room looking at a small mess of books on the table huh? Ryuko oh, what a head I have, I forgot to put this away approached the table, taking a couple of books and then walking towards a nearby bookshelf. Izuku they are basic math books, he muttered to himself. Ryuko Ryuta still doesn't learn numbers well and doesn't seem very interested so for the moment the only thing I teach her is to write although she doesn't like it very much either, her girl was stressful in that area, she didn't seem very excited about learning the basics. Izuku Ryuta Chan doesn't go to school right? The woman nodded and I don't think it's a good idea to pay private tutors because of his distrust. Ryuko that's right, I have no choice but to teach her myself or at least for now. I plan to enroll her in an academy as soon as she's old enough but for now I'm the only thing she has to learn she picked up a couple more books and put them on the shelf. Izuku can I ask why you don't send them to school? The woman stood still, thinking about the answer, maybe it will help her interact with other people and encourage her to really learn. Ryuko I'm aware of it but, her ex's face came back to her mind I'm a little scared if I'm honest, the freckled boy put a hand on her shoulder and smiled which was enough to calm her down Ryuta's father is quite insistent and I'm afraid he'll do something to him if he knows where he studies. Izuku I understand, he decides to keep her away from most things in case that guy does something to her the woman nodded touching the freckled man's hand in a self-reflection. Ryuko if you are not interested in learning, I highly doubt my plans will work, she muttered to herself, somewhat disappointed. Izuku oh just work with what Ryuta chan likes the woman looked at him confused letting go of the boy I guess I don't make myself clear if you use what Ryuta likes and start teaching him about what he likes it could lead to everything else. Ryuko I think I'm too sleepy if I don't understand and I'm sorry Midoriya-san the freckled boy smiled gracefully. Izuku giving an example, Ryuta-chan really likes dragons, if you teach her about that you could start teaching her stories about dragons and make her understand that in order for her to read them she needs to know how to read and write, in order to list them she needs math and so on with whatever you want to teach her the woman looked at him with hope in her eyes we usually learn better if we do what we like, if Ryuta-chan likes dragons why not take advantage of that? Ryuko it's brilliant Midoriya-san, she looked at him with great enthusiasm, embarrassing the freckled boy a little. Izuku just make sure you don't overwhelm Ryuta with too much information at once, it might have the opposite effect and he might end up hating what she loves the woman nodded with a tender smile. Ryuko, thank you, she looked at the clock on the wall, she had time but she was running out if you'll excuse me, I have to go make breakfast without further ado she went to the kitchen. Izuku it's incredible what she does with the little time she has, it wasn't a secret but at this point, the green-haired boy was aware that the woman had a very high position in the company so being able to do something like this was quite surprising anyway let's get Ryuta-chan up, he went to the girl's room while the mother finished breakfast. It was one of the best awakenings for the girl, with her babysitter and a tower of pancakes for breakfast, yes she was a little sad that mom had to leave but at least her babysitter was so incredible that she barely noticed the time that mom wasn't there with her, she felt pretty good that the freckled boy was there for when she was scared or hungry. She hadn't met anyone other than her mother or Aunt Rumi who treated her with such affection, it's not that she knew many people either but hey of the few outside of her mom and aunt the one she liked the most was Izuku. Ryuta Izuku what are we going to do today? She smiled excitedly at the freckled boy who caressed her hair quite calmly. Izuku today I want to show you something that I'm more than sure you'll like a lot the girl smiled quite excitedly. Ryuta what is it? What is it? He was jumping in place with great excitement. Izuku I'm going to show you dragons you've never seen before the girl was beside herself with excitement look she opened an illustration book, feeling greatly disappointed. Ryuta but that's a snake pointed to the drawing of a strange snake with feathers on its head making Izuku laugh a little. Izuku you see Ryuta-chan, around the world there are many civilizations and these civilizations had very different dragons, not all of them have bat wings and breathe fire. There are also many that are like that he turned the page showing a rather long snake with horns and a mane these types of dragons can manipulate water and the skies, being able to unleash amazing storms he said with great enthusiasm attracting the girl's interest. Ryuta sounds amazing, the freckled boy smiled. Izuku right? The girl nodded, do you want to know more? The girl nodded again, well then let's sit down, there are many dragons to meet. Ryuta Izuku look what I did the girl approached her babysitter showing a drawing of an oriental dragon that she had shown her. Izuku oh it's amazing Ryuta chan, the girl smiled with a blush, quite proud of her drawing you are a great artist the girl felt how pride filled her chest with each compliment from the babysitter. Ryuta I want to put it where mom can see it, she said excitedly and with hope. 
Izuku leave that to me took the drawing and very carefully left it on the table near the door where it would be impossible not to see it. Ryuta, do you think mom will like it? She asked nervously. Izuku I'm pretty sure, because it's something you did and it's something she values a lot the girl nodded, regaining her joy in a single instant do you want to continue drawing or would you rather eat something? It was afternoon and the girl would surely be hungry. Ryuta I want to hear another dragon story, like the one about the carp, the freckled boy chuckled at the request. Izuku you really liked that the carp turned into a dragon, didn't you? The girl nodded, she still didn't understand the reason behind something so crazy but she liked it well, how about I tell you about a dragon princess, who to defeat the darkest evil did the impossible the girl nodded running to sit down and listen. Ryuta come come, he loved to know more about the mythical beings that the freckled boy told him about. Izuku well, this story like others begins in a very very far away place, whose name has already been forgotten. The girl moved her feet with emotion for each word said by the freckled boy in that place there was a kingdom commanded by a strong and kind woman who guided everyone with great love and affection. Ryuta she is the princess? The freckled boy nodded. Izuku correct Ryuta-chan, this princess lived in a time of peace that seemed to have no end, said princess was cared for by the strongest warrior in the entire kingdom so they did not usually mess with them much, she related calmly or that was until a terrifying king appeared in the distance, someone as big as a giant and with incredible powers that he used to take everything the girl walked away a little scared the terrifying king had heard that the princess possessed magic stones that would allow her to conquer everything. Ryuta the warrior will stop him right? The freckled man smiled. Izuku it wouldn't be easy for the warrior so in a risky move the princess sent him away to prepare while she did her best to protect them all the girl looked with more interest at the green haired man so she gathered her companions and gave them the power stones to face the terrifying king trying to gain a lot of time. Ryuta did they do it? The freckled boy shook his head sadly. Izuku the king was very powerful and in a quick movement he managed to get a stone from a very close friend of the princess and increasing his power incredibly the girl began to worry they had to retreat waiting for the right moment. Ryuta and the warrior? What happened to him? The freckled man smiled regretfully. Izuku the warrior could not face her or at least not without the necessary power and the princess knew that so she ordered her companions to guard the powerful stones and wait for the right moment while she made a last sacrifice for everyone. Ryuta what did the princess do? The girl asked worried about where this story was going. Izuku in an act of hope and trust in the warrior, the princess ate his power stone which made him become a dragon for eternity the girl was surprised in her last moment of sanity the only thing that came to her mind were the memories with her friends and with the warrior so she cried her last tears making the sky itself cry at such an act of courage. Ryuta why did he do that? He said sadly. Izuku because it was the way to make a sword like no other, it took a long time but he managed to create a weapon capable of facing the terrifying king given to the warrior and with his companions they were able to defeat the king the girl looked at him and then at the ground thinking. Ryuta but what about the princess? She won't return to normal the freckled boy smiled sweetly. Izuku the warrior never gave up on his journey to make the princess human again, that cost him his life the girl no longer liked this story before such an act of loyalty the world took pity on the warrior and so after his death he rose like another dragon flying following his beloved who still cries for her warrior. Ryuta did they meet again? The freckled boy nodded. Izuku it is said that when it rains and is sunny at the same time it is because both are united, the princess's tears of happiness and the light released by the warrior is what causes it. Ryuta but that doesn't happen much complained with a pout. Izuku but it happens, they are in heaven being together in eternity the girl smiled as she liked that ending. Ryuta yes, that's right the green haired boy laughed. Izuku now let's go. You're probably hungry by now the girl nodded so she jumped to the ground and went to the kitchen followed by the freckled boy ready to eat. Meanwhile Ryuko received a rather unexpected visit from her best friend who had just returned from one of her crazy, extremely long trips. It was a total surprise to see Rumi so soon after hearing her say that she wouldn't be back for a few years because something incredible happened to her on the other side of the ocean, although of course she said that with quite a few drinks under her belt and Ryuko didn't quite believe her. It was good to have her here once again even though it may not seem like it, they were always very close and even when Ryuko got pregnant she wanted to break more than Keigo's neck for what he had done, it was adorable to see how her best friend was willing to come to her defense when she was most broken, fortunately for Keigo he was able to solve things peacefully and prevent Rumi from hunting him with everything she had. Ryuko were you really the first person you thought of when you arrived? Her friend shrugged her shoulders in disinterest, sitting in front of her to drink a juice. Rumi what can I say? I missed the brat so much he replied quite calmly. Ryuko she also missed her aunt Rumi and her crazy antics when she takes care of her the white-haired girl turned a little red. 
Rumi did she tell you about that? Her friend denied not wanting to believe how innocent her friend could be sometimes. Ryuko she's my daughter, it's obvious that she tells me everything her friend fell to the table with disappointment. Rumi we had a deal, whatever you did while I was gone? Anything new? The blonde looked at her computer, thinking about telling her about the babysitter, she knew how her friend would feel that's a yes, what happened? Ryuko Keigo came back, the white-haired girl became serious he came here and would like to claim to be with Ryuta, he also went to my event and tried to seduce me, I guess the girl he was with no longer gives him money and he thinks he can get something out of me, she closed her eyes trying to calm down. Rumi that damn, got up ready to go find him and kick him into the sun. Ryuko for the moment it is under control, even so I remain on alert for anything she commented returning to work. Rumi by the way, if you're here, who's with the brat? The atmosphere turned cold from one moment to the next. Ryuko well, you see, her voice hesitated, which the white-haired girl didn't like I hired a babysitter, her friend was static you weren't there and you know I can't leave her alone, she's still very small and there were good reviews of that place and they sent me some, well, she didn't know what to say anymore to convince her friend not to do crazy things. Rumi I'm going for the girl without further ado, she left quite calmly, which in itself was more dangerous than if she left in a rage. Ryuko wait Rumi, ran after her friend, she wasn't going to let the white-haired girl do anything to the babysitter. Ryuko couldn't follow Rumi very far from her company, being the only day of the week in which she was present, she had to solve many problems and doubts that her employees had with the projects she had, in addition to many meetings that seemed eternal about things that could be solved very easily. Time seemed eternal between each thing, she felt every second that passed, distressed by what her friend could do to the babysitter when she got home, she cursed a lot for having given Rumi a key, surely the freckled man was suffering physically and mentally, so Ryuko was already preparing in advance the apologies and monetary compensation for all the damages that her white-haired friend could cause. When her leaving time came, she didn't hear anything else from anyone else and she left like a soul carried by the devil directly to her apartment, a thousand and one situations going through her mind, each one more horrible than the last. It was no wonder, Rumi had a very strong character and since she met her, she was one to get into fights no matter the size of her opponent, she always saw her triumph, several times with more than a black eye but triumphant in the end. It was clear that Izuku wouldn't have many chances against someone that strong. There was just some traffic and an accident to end his luck, it was as if everything was against him to prevent him from getting home to control the disaster that had surely broken out and in fact he was quite surprised not to see any police patrols in the building once he arrived. He went up the elevator that felt like an eternity until he reached his floor and ran to his door, taking the knob with a sweaty hand, he opened the door without listening to anything. From what they could say it was worse than finding Rumi fighting with the freckled boy. Rumi Ga, was heard coming from her little girl's room so she hurried to drop her things, close the door and run to the little blonde's room. Ryuko Rumi, you better not have done anything wrong because if not, her voice got stuck in her throat when she looked inside the room. Rumi why do I have to be the rabbit? She cried in shame sitting on her little girl's bed while the green-haired babysitter combed her hair and the little girl placed fake ears on her head. Ryuta Aunt Rumi you promised he pouted cutely at his aunt who also pouted in response. Rumi I don't remember that, she turned her gaze away, not wanting to take responsibility for her promise. Izuku Rumi San stay still okay? He spoke very calmly leaving the white-haired girl paralyzed. Rumi yes, she looked down feeling some fear in her body. Ryuko what the hell is going on here, she muttered, not believing what her eyes were witnessing. Rumi eh? She looked to the side and froze don't look Ryuko she shouted to her friend who was paralyzed. Ryuta mommy, the girl left her aunt and ran to hug her mother who seemed completely gone. Rumi this is not what it looks like, tried to go to her friend but was held by the head by the freckled one. Izuku stay still the white-haired girl looked down in shame while the freckled boy continued to comb the girl's hair. Ryuko what's going on? She muttered, not wanting to believe what she wanted. Ryuta Aunt Rumi was very stupid with Izuku so as punishment he has to do everything I order he said quite proudly leaving the blonde mother even more confused. Ryuko eh? She looked at her friend who was very red at being discovered Rumi what happened. Rumi, in my defense, two against one is very unfair, he made a very poor excuse. Izuku I remember that Rumi-san abruptly entered Ryuko-san's apartment and tried to hit me in front of Ryuta-chan making me cry the blonde looked at her friend and then at her little girl who smiled as if nothing was happening. Ryuko so Ryuta manipulated you? She took her little girl in her arms and hugged her immediately. Rumi if that was what happened rushed to clarify things. Ryuta Aunt Rumi's nose is going to grow, he pointed at the white-haired girl who got a little nervous. Ryuko what exactly happened, honey? 
her little girl smiled as if it were the most incredible thing she had ever seen. Ryuta when Aunt Rumi came and tried to hit Izuku, he went bam and bam, he moved his arms imitating what had happened, and Aunt Rumi ended up on the ground and then she got up but Izuku made a bam and made her fall again and then I got scared because Aunt Rumi said that she was going to do bad things to Izuku and, his mother looked quite surprised. Rumi, traitorous brat, she thought with shame while her friend looked at her with some disbelief. Ryuta then they stopped fighting and let me eat ice cream, he said happily leaving his mother quite impressed. Ryuko wow. Do you think you can go get more of that ice cream while I talk to Aunt Rumi and Midoriya san? The girl nodded quite happily so the blonde put her daughter down and quickly went to the kitchen Rumi, she spoke coldly. Rumi hey, I'm the one who's suffering now, your brat is forcing me to act like a rabbit in one of her games, she said with some anger and shame. Izuku you really don't know when to stop huh? He spoke with a very kind smile which terrified the white-haired girl quite a bit. Ryuko I'm sorry this happened Midoriya san, Rumi is my best friend and she loves Ryuta very much and knows what I've been through so she tends to protect her a lot the freckled man shook his head finishing the white-haired girl's hair. Izuku don't worry, at the moment I was scared if I'm honest but I'm not resentful at all and I can perfectly understand why you acted that way although I disapprove of the use of violence in front of children he said with some irritation. Rumi hey, I already apologized, the freckled boy turned around smiling, making the girl nervous again whatever. Ryuko I'm surprised she's so nervous, she's usually not afraid of anything her friend didn't say anything. Izuku I guess I can assert myself when necessary he said calmly. Ryuko I'm glad nothing horrible happened, the last time Rumi got too excited there were a lot of injuries the freckled boy chuckled while his friend snorted. Izuku I can imagine, she is someone strong although quite uncontrolled without further ado left the room to keep the girl company. Ryuko anything you want to say now that your biggest fear has come out? Her friend let out a sigh. Finally feeling calm I don't mean to support doing harm or adding fuel to the fire, but you are capable of taking down people who are four times your size, literally speaking, I can't believe someone like Midoriya San would make you bite the dust her friend looked at the wall remembering that situation. Rumi do you remember what they used to say about kind people and the demons they really are? The blonde raised an eyebrow somewhat confused. Ryuko I think you hit yourself too hard he put a hand on her forehead to confirm if there was a wound. Rumi I'm serious, the moment I hit the ground I could see his eyes and I've been in too many fights to know that eyes that calm in such tense moments are the most dangerous her friend was surprised by what she said believe me, that guy in a fight is the worst you can face and I'm very grateful that Ryuta stopped him because if not I would be in a hospital right now the blonde looked at him with quite a bit of surprise, it wasn't possible that someone that kind could hide something so dark, right? 